Come then. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I need to not bounce this table. Back with another vlog and probably the last vlog before. Go again. Probably the last vlog before baby boy is here. Mm. Which is mental. As of right now, we are officially 37 weeks and. You're full term, aren't you? Three days, fully cooked. He is fully cooked. We were full term on Friday, which is very surreal. Um, and we thought we'd just do a bit of a pregnancy recap, answer some questions that have been asked over the months on Insta, and just go into it. Tell our, yeah. tell our story, because it'll be nice for us to kind of, there'll be things that we forget down the line. It's like gone really slow, hasn't it, but really quick at the same really, time. Yeah, like it's upon us, and then there's been slow bits like this bit's going slow now i think bit of a slog. especially for you but it'd be nice just to kind of look back and recap down the line so yeah we'll get into it can you all comment on this afterwards by the way and say that ruse still looks really good and her face has <laughs> or tripled in size like she says every day we've just been well i've just been for 10 minutes like nope wrong <laughs> angle my face looks round i looked, I looked other than a belly you couldn't tell you can if you go back to the first ever <laughs> vlog we filmed to now i'm like i think moon. you've done really well Thanks. We'll, we'll get into it. So we'll go with, should we start with questions or should we start with where we're at? Well, should we start right back? You're full term now, aren't you? So everyone knows that. Yeah. So full term, we had a midwife appointment this morning at, like I say, 37 weeks. Baby's head is well in, well down, down there. ready to go. Um, and we're just waiting for him to arrive, really. Like in an ideal world, I think we want him now well this afternoon would be good so then i don't have to go on <laughs> she's, she's on two nights Steve, so she's like any if you can come now that'd be brilliant and i'm like yeah if you can come now that'd be absolutely we'd wonderful. take him now wouldn't we we're ready we are ready we're, we're ready to go we've done our hospital bags F physically mentally ready people are saying you're delusional like first babies come 40 plus weeks yeah. um we'll take him now we but we'll take him now but we'll, we'll go back to the beginning so for us as you know, if you haven't already, go back and watch our IVF journey so far off. First. He's obviously an IVF baby, isn't he? <laughs> I could have gone on a night out on yeah, a Saturday night done. and done my bit. You could have had a good time. It'd been a lot cheaper. <laughs> it would have been a hell of a lot cheaper. But go back and watch the first frozen embryo transfer, IVF journey so far, and it kind of keeps you up to date. But right back, we did our transfer on the 7th of June, 2023. And then we had to wait two weeks for to test now i know some people test early don't they in that time frame yeah we were very adamant we weren't going to do that and i'm glad we stuck to that because i feel like I've, and i've said this in the previous vlog that if we'd have tested early you're almost putting yourself through shit twice and it were hard enough in itself weren't it yeah um because i feel like if you got a negative five days in you then have to wait a few more days before testing again and it would just it would just it definitely <laughs> made it tougher, wouldn't it? Yeah, it were hard. So we waited two weeks. I woke up at four in the morning. I thought, I am not getting back to sleep now. We did the test. And as you all know, Hensel's been here. It were a big fat positive, weren't it? I couldn't believe it. It were unbelievable. Like, Even now, it's unbelievable. It's, the, it's obviously the result that we wanted, but you still have that disbelief, don't you? Like Our jaws dropped. Yeah. I think we just... Cause IVF's a really difficult process, isn't it? I think there's so many people that have to go through it. And even normal people, like, it's hard. It can be really hard for some people to get pregnant, can't it? So of course it can. It would just massively overwhelming. I think as well, because our IV IVF is a journey. Like, there's so many highs, there's so many lows. And I think because we'd already experienced a complete mix of both, we, didn't, we literally didn't know which way it was going to go. We had one disappointing egg collection, didn't we? And one really good one. So it was... Yeah so anyway we are where we are so we were we found out and at that point we found out after two weeks but in gestation age we were four weeks i think that's how it works which confused us for a while it, like since your last period or something yeah they go off your last period date don't they um so so it was around the time of my sister's 30th birthday so this the date was the 20th of june my sister's birthday was the 30th of june it's end of june yeah. end of june did I say my sister's 30th birthday? Yeah. <laughs> that's, baby, that's baby brain. My sister's like 37. Yeah, but she'll take it. She'll take it. Her birthday's the 30th of June. And the day before I woke up, Holly was on a night shift. And I woke up and I was bleeding. And obviously, first trimester, you hear about bleeding. 
trigger word miscarriage like we completely just feared the worst didn't we and it was horrible we rang obviously no one knew at this point we were doing the transfer in complete secret we rang our fertility clinic and we couldn't get in could we for like four or five days yeah um so it was just a weekend of hell like we don't think, even don't even think we spoke to each you other you were scared to go to the like you were scared to go to the loo weren't you because every time you went like, there was yeah. spotting and bleeding and it would just yeah like, it just and weren't then, nice at all was it i was like losing too much i don't think there's much thing as too much info here but i was losing like tissue and they say again gray tissue bleeding backache all negative signs. And you, so. you Google stuff and it doesn't help. No, it it's horrible. just we we just like time literally stood still, didn't it? We didn't know what to say to each other. We just went through phases like hours where we just didn't, we didn't speak, speak because we just, didn't want to speak anything negative we over it. Either, we were scared didn't we? to talk about it, weren't we? Just until we had some confirmation that everything was all right or not. Or yeah, it was just one way or the other. So yeah. this was a Thursday. Due to go out on the Friday for my sister's birthday, so. Obviously, I'm a mess. Hull was actually on shift this day. So she had to just go to work and kind of crack on. So I I had to tell my sister. And it was in a way that I never really wanted her to tell. Like, because you have that idea of telling your sister in a big surprise and a, being all like, do you know? And it just, I just said, can you come home? she come home. And I was crying and she just, she kind of just knew. She went, are you pregnant? And I'm like, started bursting, yeah. crying, thinking, I think I've lost the baby. Obviously, weren't going out that night, so we then had to blag it that I was just done well or I weren't feeling very well. And then we had to wait, like I say, up until the Tuesday for the confirmation at the fertility clinic. So yeah. we went there. Yeah. Go on. And then I, when she did the scan, because they don't say anything straight away, do they? Which is horrible. I, I, I saw a little flicker like a, well, I thought in my head, that's a heartbeat, but... I don't know what I'm looking at, like, but I thought... At the time as well, like, yeah. it's like a little knick-knack. Like, just, imagine the yeah. knick-knack, Chris. It literally yeah. looks like that. And then she said, oh, look, there's a heartbeat. And I was like, I knew it. And it was just... The relief. The, the I've got relief. goosebumps oh, now, no. just saying it. it. Was, yeah. The relief was... We were really lucky, because that was about six and a half weeks. Six weeks, three days. I can yeah. remember it now. And, and we saw a heartbeat. We saw a little heartbeat, really, which yeah. we are really lucky with because yeah. I know some people don't see that until seven weeks. So if you are at the point of you are waiting for that first scan, it's six weeks and you've not, they say after seven weeks. But we were just lucky in the sense that we saw it early. Yeah. Um, so she was like, no, you're fine. We're discharging you. Everything looks great. It can just be a little bit of bleeding like it does happen to some. It doesn't happen to others. Go on and send you on your way. Get in touch with the midwife through the NHS and crack on. Really? Yeah, that were it, yeah. So we got home, obviously six weeks, three days, and then by we got by seven weeks, we thought, because we I've said it before, but we live with my family, and we're obviously living under the same roof, and it's hard. We wanted to keep it a secret up until at least twelve weeks, didn't we? But I think the weekend that we went through, we just thought we need support here, like whatever way this was to go, we need they need to know about it, basically, yeah. weren't it? Um, I think they sent. I think they thought we'd fallen out or something. Else. Yeah, because we weren't speaking. Because, yeah, because it, we hadn't fallen out at all. But there was. You can just if you you can just sense it, couldn't you? Like we were really like low low mood, and I think this was something was wrong. But they must have just assumed that we fell out. Yeah, because at the same time when we did do the pregnancy announcement, we've got the vlog on that. They had no idea. Yeah. It was the best feeling in the world. Like we told them here, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. And it was just amazing. So I literally said seven weeks or seven and a half weeks or something like that. And we'd only been married a month, hadn't we? So yeah, people but... weren't expecting it at all. Because um, we literally got back from the honeymoon and we Two days later we yeah, started, didn't we? You'd, we'd gone, we'd booked in the um, transfer, hadn't we? So like, yeah. people just weren't expecting it to happen that quick. And it did. But so that was seven weeks. The night we told them, the night. The um, night, or literally the night after, Holly was on a night shift. I always seem to be at work when these things happen. <laughs> I woke up and the bleed was worse than ever. It was actually a laugh. The first bleed was actually laughable in comparison because how much we panicked over that first bleed compared to what was coming out at that at this now point, it was horrific. I, I think that time it was paired with pain as well. Wasn't yeah, it? so my you back had, was in cramps and Agony. stuff as well yeah no 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 oh. not cramps <laughs> like i thought i was in labor it was that bad like if i'm i've not been in labor yet but if i were gonna <laughs> guess 
what labour pain feels like, it was this. I was in agony. I were heavily, heavily bleeding, like minglingly sent Holly photos of... Minglingly, is that a word? It is now. <laughs> what was on the tissue and it were like, no, like, yeah. this this isn't, this isn't right. We've, I think we've lost the baby. Thank God we told, in answer, thank God we told my mum and dad because can you imagine me going into their room for the first time in the middle of the night saying, I'm pregnant, I'm bleeding, I think I'm losing the baby. Like that had been traumatic for everybody all around. So I'm ringing hall, ringing hall, ringing hall, not picking up, obviously at work. Um, eventually comes through and I, well, we're just in bits, weren't I? Yeah, we just said, tell your dad. Your dad took you up to hospital and I met you there. Didn't I? Yeah, he flew me over. Hall got straight there. The bleed did not stop. Um, and we were just putting like a hold. To be fair, there were like a four hour wait and I physically said, I cannot wait. I need to go through. They buzzed me straight through. Um, they were really good in that sense. They did like my bloods. They did whatever they got to do. And then it was just a case of, okay, let's see if triage upstairs will admit you. Um, and we just waited to go up, didn't we? And we, we went up and she did a speculum thing. And she said, hmm, <laughs> not slagging the hospital off in any way, but it was shit. She was like, hmm, what did she say? Your cervix looks closed at the minute. Um, so we can't really tell if you're miscarrying or not. You'll have to come back in 12 hours. We were like, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was hard. <laughs> it was horrible. I think the during the night, obviously they can't scan and stuff, so it, it's just due because of the time. It, we were just really unfortunate, weren't we? Yeah. And it just meant a long wait that following day um, before we could get a scan. So it's mm. like three in the morning. We couldn't get back in until four o'clock in the afternoon. That was our first NHS scan, weren't it? Yeah. So we went back at, obviously that day we just turned. I think it was like four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, we were over 12 hours we had to wait for. Mm. Obviously we'd not slept, you're just fearing the worst. The bleed does not stop. Um, so we went to EPU, Emergency Pregnancy Unit, and they did an internal scan, which I've been used to because with IBF, they do internal scans all the time. You've had them all along. I don't think it's the norm of a normal pregnancy. Because um, once you normally you just have your twelve week scan and then you're on your stomach, but I was used to them. Anyway, silence. Like you're just waiting for it to say, "There's baby's heartbeat," and I remember just looking at you, thinking, "She's not speaking. Why they is she have, not speaking?" They have to look, don't they? Like they have to look at everything before they can speak to you. And I, I don't think in that room, you because normally have the they have another screen where you can look. But we couldn't see anything, could we? Because she was examining you and stuff. Um, but we got good news in the end, didn't she we? She flipped the screen around and she was like, there's baby. And we were yeah, just like heartbeat, yeah. crying my eye, absolute yeah. eyes out. Relief. So this is probably the start of what is our subchorionic hematoma story. We've not actually spoke about this before. Um, obviously, that's the start of it. A subchorionic hematoma, basically in short, is... Say the baby's in the sack, this big bleed wrapped all the way around the sack. And the risks were if that bleed comes into contact with the sack, baby's gone, basically. Yeah. So they give us a threatened miscarriage booklet, sent mm -hmm. you on your way and said, see you in two weeks. You said it could have been from like an implant. Yeah, bleed, so the, the more end. common with IVF pregnancies, yeah. um, because with the transfer, you're going in with equipment and you can catch the bleed or yeah. the implantation bleed. But they don't really have an explanation as such for it. It's just one of those things, isn't it? I'm sure it happens to a lot of people, but for us... Well, I don't know, because it is yeah. supposed to be like a rare case. Yes, people will have had them, but it's... It's not a common thing. It literally felt like the end of the world. Didn't yeah, it, it? was hor horrendous. So then we looked up like these groups um, on Facebook and what people had had, and there were success stories. But then there were some obviously a lot of people losing the babies, and it was just it was just a, a tough time, weren't it? Like you would literally, I got put on um, pelvic rest, which meant I could walk a short walk in the day, and then basically don't leave the couch, which is a challenge for me in itself because that's not it wasn't me at the time, was it? Um, and just it just basically don't do the right lot because you could interfere with the bleed, you can make it worse. Then we were to rescan in two weeks. In those two weeks, I literally did not stop bleeding. So from going, it's just like every single week, you're just fearing it, weren't we? 
like everywhere you were fearing it come out all sorts of colours so again sorry too much info some of them were black as the ace of spades I passed clots um, quite heavy clots in which every time you're looking to see is is that baby because that can very much be a thing if you pass the baby um, just rough weren't it yeah it's, it's actually mad to think that all that I've sort of put that to the back of my mind but now we're talking about it it's like it was actually really bad it was horrible. So, yeah. so every two weeks we'd scan. So that started at seven weeks. So we got scanned at nine weeks, 11 weeks, and then 13 weeks. And each time we went, it got a tiny, tiny bit smaller. And what needed to happen was as baby got bigger, it baby needed to be bigger than the, the bleed. Baby just outgrew it, didn't it? And your body, your body sorted it out itself, didn't it? Yeah, your so as just... baby got bigger, it almost pushed the, the bleed yeah. out. I recall the lady that scanned you it's like a, a bruise inside and obviously that's the blood and it can your body just kind of should deal with it hopefully and yeah throws it so in, that's what I, re I remember him uh, describing it like that to us actually yeah um so that was like our 12 30 week scan in fact it must have just been after 12 because we didn't tell anybody else until we got the all clear from that um yeah. and then it would kind of just yeah, you treat it like a normal pregnancy. You don't have to come meet you anymore. Like you go to your midwife, and I feel that's when our pregnancy really started. Yeah, anyway. everything seemed to get better from there. Like you, because you were really quite tired and off your food, and obviously the bleed. I think like, that's just first. Yeah, the yeah, <laughs> first trimester oh, in general. Actually, pretty rough. thinking about it now, it was like really, really bad. <laughs> And like now, it's... bit of PTSD from it all. Yeah, no, it's I... like you're digging up. <laughs> I've seen to just like I actually forgot how bad it really yeah, was. Like but actually, after that, you really thrive. Like, cause yeah, they say you, your second we have, trimester is better anyway. We have was. tears over chicken. Yeah, first trimester. Like, so bleed aside. Oh. First trimester is rough, you know, so I slept all day, every day. How I managed to keep my business going, I do not know because I slept. How you managed to stay married, I don't know, <laughs> actually thinking about it now. The, the, How are you still married? In terms of symptoms, because people ask that, three diversions. So we did have tears over chicken. I could not stand Meal them. times. I used to get anxiety <laughs> over meal. I have forgotten about all of this. I would get anxiety over meal time. Chicken, red meat. <laughs> Protein, yogurts, <laughs> salads, like anything remotely healthy. I thought I was going to be the girl that was like, yeah, <laughs> picture of health. Absolutely not. What did I go on? Microchips, super noodles. One day I bought uh, straight microchips instead of <laughs> crinkly microchips. <laughs> and it was like, th I'd, I'd committed a murder or something. <laughs> I was like, crinkle cut microchips, nothing else will do. They would taste very different to straight this microchips. This just fell out of my brain. Comes on with straight microchips. I'm like, Take them I'm back. gonna need therapy after this. <laughs> uh, what else are there? So food aversions are quite rough. Also, tiredness. I used to have vivid food. dreams. Oh my god! I thought I had nightmares as a kid. These were like, I was, I was there. These were like really vivid mm. night sweats. I'd wake up, piss sweat through, like I'd just been in the shower. Um, yeah, wild one. But then second trimester, it got brilliant. Best time really. really good. <laughs> people, I didn't. I never got that. Do you know like people say that you get like a second trimester glow? I never got that. I still felt. I never really got the energy. Did just, I? Just things kind of got back to normal. A little like, bit better. I could ask you what you wanted for your tea without <laughs> being nervous about I'm it. Still a bit dodgy with chicken now, though. To be honest. Yeah, we used to get to Nando's a few. Now yeah, like, can't I, do that. We haven't had Nando's in That's ages. That's gone. Yeah, but I, energy didn't get better until like twenty eight. Well, twenty four weeks maybe. Yeah. So I was still knackered, but yeah, the food aversions got better. I didn't feel sick. So I was never physically sick, but I had a lot of nausea. And the only thing that had settled it was like a biscuit in the morning. In fact, the only thing that settled it was to eat, but then eating made you feel sick. You didn't really know what you wanted to eat. No. So I actually lost weight in the first trimester. I think I lost five pounds, which it is what it is. It didn't, I couldn't do anything about it. I just couldn't physically eat. Could I? There was just nothing that I wanted. But yeah, second one come round, that were good. And then I think once we were able to tell people as well, you, you can start talking about it. So time didn't stand still as much. Like obviously it was very much between us. We told Holly's family, we were able to share it there. Um, and time just got a little bit quicker. Yeah, I feel like that middle part went quick. And then one day you just lay on the sofa and I looked at you and your belly were just like 
it worked because she is really slim. You are, aren't you? Well, you'd <laughs> say that you're not, or you weren't. But when I look I back now, I think like, you're stupid. You're stupid cow <laughs> because I was slimmer than I am now, obviously, mm. and I used to moan that I weren't. But I think I'll go on to that. But I do think you find a, d a new like appreciation for your body. But yeah, I would. Mm. I would. One day stupid. your belly just went. Yeah, popped. Didn't it? Yeah. I'd say I got to like 16 weeks and then I just come on. Yeah. I? Yeah. Uh, but second trimester, we put, not not a lot to, to tell in that one. It was pretty straightforward, real lucky. Got, but you're always like hit, trying to hit the next milestone. So it doesn't, like, your anxiety doesn't get better. It just changes. So you, you're trying to get to 12 weeks. And then we learned that actually your second trimester is 14 weeks. So you're trying to get to that. And then you want to get to your 16 week consultation appointment. And then you want to get to your 20 week anatomy scan and then you want to get to the next trimester so everything's just like you're just waiting all the time aren't you yeah but we are very very lucky As, apart from the horrendous first trimester that we just dug back up yeah we've been we've had a brilliant pregnancy and i cannot fault it at all um then we hit the third trimester at 28 weeks and then it's just started to yeah just been a bit we're just getting to the point now where I say we, I'm getting to the point now where I'm just ready. Like, you're uncomfortable, aren't you? I'm uncomfortable. Like, you know, people say, oh, you're not massive. I know all that, but I'm, I'm uncomfortable for me. I'm big for me. And I am, you know, a couple of stone up. And you're just, you're just carrying it all around. Plus, you can't sleep very well. That means Hull's not sleeping very well. Um, and you're just ready. Like, it's been nine months. Like, we're just ready to meet him and we're excited, aren't I'm we? I'm just but very excited, aren't Outside we? of that, we can't really know. No. So as of right now, I've You've said done very got, well, darling. Thanks, I'm love. very proud we've of you. We've put up with each other quite well. Yeah. Paul's looked after me. I've had nightly rubs. When yeah. I say rubs, I'm like back rubs. I'm gonna get arthritis in my fingers very um, soon. <laughs> obviously, you've been at work for the best part, but it's it's probably worth it because I need time on my own because you don't want to be with me all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been it's been good, and this is where we're at. So right now, we really want him to come because. Obviously, because we wanted to come, but also the pickle in our mind at the minute is with IVF pregnancies, they don't like you to go over 40 weeks. Now, some people watching this will say, well, our hospital don't even talk about that. Our trust does, and it's different from trust to trust. And the, the research of going over is basically because as you go over 40 weeks with an IVF, there is some evidence to say that the risk of stillborn increases. The numbers may be low, Oh, but they still increase. And for me, as a bit of a worrier anyway, I will struggle to go against medical advice. Some people say, no, I'm just going to let my body go naturally and do its thing, which in an ideal world I would. But they they almost put the fear of God in you from, from day dot. And then as it's approaching, it's it's hard to sort of see past that in it. So... We do think he will be a February baby regardless because we don't think we're going to go past that 40 week mark. Um, you can either be induced at that point or you can obviously go for a plan C-section. My ideal scenario or our ideal scenario is that we're chilling at home, contractions start, Yeah. we labour at home for as long as possible. Yeah. We go to the midwife-led centre, which is not the medical side and it's just kind of the bridge the gap between being at home and being at hospital. So for us, for him to come spontaneously would be our best case scenario. But we are stuck in two minds of what to do if we do not get to that point. Induction doesn't sound like a good idea, to me anyway. There's a lot of people with positive inductions, but there's also a hell of a lot of people with negative outcomes. And I'm, I'm bad for looking into data, right? Holly... Holly's research is one born every minute. So I've, been I've watched one born every minute and I'm scared. <laughs> but that doesn't count. I'm not I'm going scared. off that. Like, I look at, I think it's just from my work and stuff. I look at data, I look at science, I look at research. I know 60% of inductions end in an emergency section. I know that it leads, there's more chance of it leading to forceps, to the vacuum, is it call it, baby being in distress. And that sits with you, I think, don't it? Because obviously all we want him to be here is safe. Obviously C-section comes with its risks. A natural birth will come with its risk and there's no guarantee in whatever scenario that you go into. But we're just piled with this data and it's like, what the hell do we do? So if you're watching this and you've had experience of a plan section and an induction, please let us know. <laughs> because we're stuck. But 
we keep saying every day he's gonna come today like today's yeah. the day we speak to him like right we're ready for you come out we're keeping active so he'll come yeah Wanna? but if he doesn't then we don't know what to do so help so help <laughs> should we answer some of these questions i feel like we've answered quite a bit through our story anyway but i'll answer some that we've not and then we can squash them so the next question was, or the first question was, will Horry, Holly carry next? Horace? Horry? Hey, Horry. <laughs> hey, Harry. Will you carry next? <laughs> um, well, that's the idea. We, sorry, it? we keep bouncing this thing. Yeah, sorry. We get, get asked that a lot. We're yeah. like, we're not even had the first it's, baby yet, but people are intrigued. Yeah. I suppose it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when, which... You say that, it was always an if before this pregnancy. Oh, yeah, then Rue got pregnant and was like, you're definitely doing this, so now I am. No, I am doing it from that aspect. But yeah. also, it's amazing. Like, it is amazing. And for me to feel what I feel and to have the bond with him, obviously Holly has a bond with him, but like I'm feeling him kick and the way that he moves and just the feelings that you get being the carrier mother, I feel like you really need to experience that. And then I would never put that on you. Like, that's still your decision, but you're open to that, aren't you? Yeah. Because it was always going to be like, will I carry... Holly's eggs next, which is called reciprocal IVF. So that was always up in the air. But I think as of right now, Holly's going to go yeah. next. As long as I don't watch any more One Born Every <laughs> Minute, I think I can do it. <laughs> but when, like you say, when when that happens, we don't know because people are like, are you going to have them close together, like far apart? Mm. I don't know because for us, right now, it's all about this little boy and it's about soaking him up when he's here. Yeah. We've always said Adjusting. we want... Yeah, we've always said we want... Um, multiple kids. If you're asking me, I'd have yeah, six kids. Have. Holly wants three max. Yeah, I'd even. So we might be able yeah. to push to four. <laughs> we'll, see, but we'll see how we get on with this one. I kick me then. Yeah. So see how we get on with this. But yeah, that's a, the plan. But we're just not sure on when yet because we'd like to just one step at a time. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully, like everyone who supported us now has been amazing and. We want to keep sharing that when the little boy comes and then obviously when it's Holly's turn next, that'll be something new to kind of document along the way. And I think it'll be a completely different journey, even though what's amazing is obviously we're both going to experience pregnancy, which ordinarily straight couples wouldn't. They'd experience it in very different ways. However, I feel like even our pregnancy journeys will be very different because one of just who I am as a person, how I process things versus you. And also we're going to have a, we're going to have a, toddler or a little boy or like yeah. the, the waiting around that we did bed rest and we'll living day by day that. like it's not going to be like that we're going to be very busy my pregnancy will be very different to yours won't it just yeah of, and know. hopefully it is anyway because again if you follow it you'll know that holly's bloods actually came back better than mine and at the time of us doing like the pre-checks of where we were both at from a fertility standpoint Holly was in a position where she could do IUI, which basically means artificial insemination. So in the in the nicest, plainest way possible, they just pop the sperm in there. So it's a, a shorter process. A shorter really? process. She, she hopefully wouldn't have to go down the medication route, um, the egg retrievals, the transfer. They should be able to just pop the sperm in and you hope for the best. The success rates are lower, but because her bloods are better... There's a chance. So the process would be very, very, very different. Yeah. And then off the back of that was, do you have any embryos left? So, yes. Got four of your eggs with the same donor. And that's another thing we've got asked about the donor as well, haven't we? Like, we're you going to use the same Yeah. So we've got donor. four babies. It says, sounds daft, but four yeah. babies in the freezer. We had five. We used one. The one worked. So we've got four babies left. Next time... We will still have four because next time Holly will genetically be part of that egg and therefore the ones that are stored right now are, are mine biologically. So we will still have four regardless. So when it comes to Hall, will we use the same sperm yeah. so that the, the babies are biologically related and then it will be your genetics. There's yeah. so many different ways of doing it, and it's, it's all Honestly, it's personal preference. This is the way we've chosen to do it, and it just we'd like them to have the same donor, wouldn't we? Yeah, of just... course. So, and we've still got two vials of sperm left, so basically two tries with Holly, 
and let's say she didn't catch in two tries, but she will. Yeah. Um, we can purchase more vials from the donor. If the donor was to take himself off the site, which is European Sperm Bank, who are amazing, we would then be in a position where we would have to look at a different donor and in which they wouldn't be biologically related. However, I think when it knuckles down to it, doesn't really matter. Well, like, we, yeah. we're a family, we'll be brought up as a family, there will be brothers, there will be sisters, and that's that. Yeah. So I think we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it, but that is the, the plan for that. Mm. Yeah? The next one was, how have you dealt with weight gain in the pregnancy? <laughs> she does my head in. I do. <laughs> no. So, I don't know how deep to get with this one. I'll give you a few examples. Is my face round? No, it is not. round. I'll no, wait for your round. feedback. <laughs> it's not round. <laughs> Were well, you lying? <laughs> but if I was to say, yeah, your face is round, I'd, like, get, I'd get a slap across the face, so I literally cannot win in this situation you think you're wide don't you you're no, not wide right so you look amazing if you was, if you were to stand there naked i'm sure we'd get a lot of likes for that but <laughs> and it might end up on a different site but <laughs> if you were to stand there naked like no that maternity shoot we did we did a maternity shoot amazing and i really did enjoy it, it like, was such a good confidence i probably did feel and really i was like, like see See, look, you look amazing. <laughs> yeah, but she, she should have been in like a next catalogue or next. even Vogue. Sorry, next. Vogue. Look at next. I was Calvin Klein model last week and now I'm in the next catalogue. <laughs> yeah, Calvin Klein. Um, no, pregnant it, women. honestly, it depends what day you ask me. So yeah. without getting <clears throat> too deep, my background years ago, many a moon ago, is I have a background of an eating disorder, right? So, I don't know, I'm, this, like, we're talking eight years Can't on. Can't stop from eating there. Yeah, I'm, op- <laughs> I'm the opposite now, eight years on. But I did always wonder, pre-pregnancy, whether I would be triggered by it, whether it would bring it back, whether I would struggle mentally. Um, and it's not been the case, has it? Like, it's really not. From a weight gain perspective, it depends what day you ask me, and I don't think there's a woman in the world that won't agree that some days you feel good, other days it's hard to see your body change. And I absolutely love my bum. I do, don't yeah. I? Like, I love him. I do keep reminding you that you'll miss the bum. And I will, bum. and I know yeah. I will miss the you'll bum. You'll miss the bum. I absolutely love him. I love the bum. I love... What I don't like is the other things that come with it. So, yes, my face is rounder, whether you agree or not. My thighs rub together and jiggle more than that I would like. Like... My rings is like, and my fingers are swelling. I've only got one complaint. My boobs are a it's little not, bit saggy no. already. I've only got one complaint. What? You trump all the time. <laughs> Trump's putting it politely. Trump is putting oh, it politely. On a separate note, I, I will hold my hands up. I have lost all ability to hold in my trumps. <laughs> I'm worried that you I used to give, else I, out when you do that. I used to give Holly lots of shit because she used to go for a wee. I'm going to out her now. But every <laughs> wee that she has, even now, she will trump, right? Anybody in the world <laughs> that's trumps bull- when they wee. That's bullshit. That's bullshit because I've gone 32 years being well, able to, like... You're a free spirit now. But my, <laughs> my clicker has gone. <laughs> my clicker... Has gone. I cannot hold in my trumps, and I've not trumped in her in front of her for the four years of being together. Now, I trumped on a leg over there just yeah. for crack. So but I'm massaging you, and <laughs> just this smell, <laughs> and you don't even know you've done it half the time. Oh, we were talking about yeah, weight gain. Sorry, yeah, but that's along with the weight gain. Yeah, it's all the pressure it's from It's all my like you've just let everything go. <laughs> yeah, but no, honestly, and it mm. depends what day you ask me. On some days I feel great, on others. You just look in the mirror and you think, shit, like I'm a little I'm a little bit different. But in the grand scheme of things, when I sit back and look at it, I'm not bothered because yeah. I will never get this pregnancy, this first pregnancy again. It's an experience, it's like life changing. And really, luckily I'm in the job to know what to do to get it back off, and I will get it back off. And I'm not gonna pressure myself on the other side, like if it takes me nine months to get off. I think I said what I, what I think I'll find difficult is now, with the change in my shape, there's a reason why. Yeah, you've got a purpose. I've got a purpose. You? It's in there. My body's doing what I'm doing. I think once it's out and I'm then left with what I'm left with, I think that might be a little bit harder to process and you might give yourself a better time. But I've, said, I've already said to Holly, like, 
a harder time sorry i've already said to you like pull me up on it and remind me what you've just done like what you've just been through and it'll take a while it took nine months to get there it's going to take a bit to come off isn't it and it's just one yeah. of them but I, I i think i've handled it quite well for yeah in the grand scheme of things i am 20 and what am i 30 pounds up which is i'm five pounds off two and a half stone i think um a three stone anyway whatever my predicted weight gain will like up to 35 pounds so i feel like i'm sat where i need to be sat i don't think anything's excessive i don't think i've not gained enough i think i'm just where i need to be you i haven't got any complaints like you look you look amazing Thanks. you just you just must look in the mirror and see something completely different. <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. Now I'm PM at night. I am like Fiona from Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Will you vlog the birth? <laughs> I think that's I, my job, isn't it? I really want yeah. to vlog birth. Like, don't get me wrong, you're not going to be sat on YouTube looking at my one eight and baby's head coming out. But I've watched a lot of birth vlogs in this pregnancy and I love them yeah you've watched a lot haven't you i love them and not even like yeah like some of you might be interested but even for us to look back down the line and think that is the day that our baby was born i think that'd be amazing yeah it's just whether I, it's yeah. in her hands isn't it because i'm going to be pretty yeah. tired up so i will do my best i will do my best to film it i um, hope you will yeah <laughs> i'm gonna i'm we're gonna like film it aren't we that's we're gonna do it with camera we'll set the track yeah. up whatever we get we get Obviously, as well, it depends on what way he ends up coming. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're saying and we're wanting here spontaneously in which we can film different bits. If we go in for a planned induction or reception, I don't know what we'll be able to capture. But the idea is that, yeah, we'll, we'll vlog as much as physically possible. Yeah. People even get, like, photographers and videographers in, so you should be glad I'm not going down that route. Because <laughs> you, I, I would You do would that. do that. If you would did, actually do that. If it didn't mean that I had to, like, replace my mum or something, I would do that. I would get someone in. I will have the camera like this, bottom end. <laughs> yeah, so on that as well, people have asked, will you let Holly see? She can only look at the point where his head is coming out. Otherwise, like they say, it's like your favourite pub burning down. Except it's not my favourite pub. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? What does that mean? <laughs> no. It, I would like to look. I'd like to look. I feel like one bone every minute has prepared me. No, you don't For see. For what it's going to look like. Well, I just know in that moment, it's not going to look like my one, is it? It's going to look like I'm giving birth. So I don't mind at that point. What is it going to look like? A rugby ball. <laughs> Cutting half. Cutting half. That's Cutting what someone described it to us. Uh... So at the point of baby's head coming out, mm. I am more than happy for you to crack on. Otherwise, I'd like you up top. We have, obviously, you discuss as well, like, how do you want to be in labour? And you see some people in one ball, yeah. like, come on, come babe, on, come you on. I'm like, this. you come near me no, like that. <laughs> Not for me. I need my space. Hands. You can hold my hand. Yeah. You can like Look. help me with my breath, <laughs> and then we'll be fine. Won't we'll we? manage. Yeah, but I will document it as best I can. Yeah, we can always try and blur stuff out if it's a bit. Yeah, we'll blur that bit out downstairs, won't we? You don't <laughs> want to see that. <laughs> I'll just do a couple more. I feel like we've waffled onto you for ages there. So one was, do we have a name for him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? Well, I think we do, but we're, we're what like... What do you mean? No, we do, but we're... I've like, got personalised things. Well, yeah, we do. We do. We do. Just not, it's hard, isn't it? Because you tell people names that you like. We've learnt the hard way, haven't we? You tell people names you like, and then it's like, oh, no, I don't like that. Yeah. It's not... I will say it's nothing wild. It's not like rumour. It's not like rumour. <laughs> like, when you grow up being called rumour, and you have to spell it and repeat it 24 times before yeah. someone says... Rumour. See, I grew up with that, but my last name, because my previous surname was double barreled, so it is like we've tried to keep it as yeah, it's, it's simple as possible. We just like it. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we know what he's going to be, and he feel we don't call him that. Obviously, I'm yeah. not going to say it now, but we don't call him that because we didn't want to get too used to it to where we didn't like it anymore, or yeah. if it comes out and actually we feel he's not what we think he's going to be, then you don't want to be like deflated by it or like. There's other names that we do like, but yeah, we think he's got his name. And then we weren't going to do middle names, but we think we might. Um, I don't know why, because I don't use my middle name. You don't, you, I'm Rumor Laura Mall and you're Holly Elizabeth. Yeah. After Queen Elizabeth. Uh, that's actually, that actually what my mum said, yeah. 
Because she liked the Queen's name. Um, but we, we, there's a couple that we like. Right. I think it's that's one thing we do have a different opinion on because I would like if he was to have a middle I'm name. I'm gonna look a knob now. No, you know. Yeah. No, I I, we just it's just a difference of opinion. So Go on. I, I would like to have a middle name that means something. So like our niece calls him Peter <laughs> all the time. My She's, niece is our yeah. niece is called him Peter. From day dot after, yeah. after Peter Rabbit, right? How so, we're going to tell her? He so he's not Peter. At least yeah. you know that. But <laughs> my way around it, and my granddad was called Peter. So it's like you know, middle names have a nice meaning, don't they? Like they don't necessarily get used. Like, but equally, my brothers and sisters have all got middle names after family members, except I didn't. So growing up, I was like, well, why have I got a middle name after somebody? Whereas you're not. Fuss for that, are you? It's not like I'm not, yeah, I'm not. It's not like you're the in the name wrong. And you're just not fussed over it, and you don't like Peter the name. But I, I think, think it's cute because of Dotty. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sorry if the so, baby's called Peter. It's not gonna have Peter just, as a middle name either. It's just not for us that one. For you, but it's for me. Yeah, but so, that's that. Yeah. Uh, predictions of features. So, what do we think his hair, eyes, weight will be? I think so. He's predicted as eight pound nine. We know that growth scans can be well off. However, I do have a feeling he's going to be of a good weight. I don't think he's going to be a tiny baby. May well mm. be wrong, but his belly's always measured a couple of weeks ahead, hasn't he? Bless mm. him. So I think around eight, eight and a half in weight. What do you think? I think when we did them prediction things at Babe Show, I put £7.10 or something. I'd take that as well. Like, that's fine. And then features wise. So again, if you don't know, we went for a donor with darker features so that Hopefully, baby will come out with some resemblance of dark featured. Is Deirdre over here? Is, <laughs> Deirdre. <laughs> He's half Italian, half Spanish. He is half the daughter, Italian, isn't yeah. he? Um, but he was, I don't, on his features, I don't think he's like dark, dark, is he? Like no. black hair like me, but he's still quite fair, he was described as. So it was a bit of a middle ground as well, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so it, he was blonde upon birth. Um, I was blonde upon birth, so my guess is that he's going to be blonde, or I think he'll be yeah. a baldy, a little bald baby. Yeah. I don't think he'll have a full head of hair. Well, I'd be very surprised. It's weird, isn't it? Because you you're so picky over like no, the donor's I'm not features. Picky. I'm, no, you're guessing I'm what not it'll saying be. you. I'm just saying in general, we were so picky over like the donor's features, and actually, it really doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. But no. I hope he has Rue's eyes, which is like what i've always hoped for but we'll see either way we're gonna love him no matter what he looks Possibly. like Ellie, but so. you can't help but talk yeah. about what you think he'll look like or um, we've had a few 4d scans and we're like does he have this feature that feature and yeah yeah we'll, we'll soon very very soon find out won't we yeah obviously on the flip side to that which we probably spoke about before is when it comes to hull carrying because we've gone for a darker featured sperm donor the chance of him coming out with blonde hair blue eyes to resemble me is very 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 slim but mm -hmm. again it's it's irrelevant because you will love him wholeheartedly no matter what he looks like. Just, you could go on for hours talking yeah, about could. donors, couldn't you? But it's yeah. just, it was so hard to pick. Yeah. So hard. But we'll take him what, however he is. We will. Shall we wrap it up there? Yeah. I feel like we've gone on for about 40 minutes. But yeah, well, next bit, we're going to show you what's in our hospital bag. And then we'll wrap up the video. And then the next one that you see should hopefully be, if Hull pulls the finger out, the, uh, the birth vlog. Oh yeah, I've got <laughs> to film that, must have been to film that. <laughs> so, we are just finalising our hospital bags. We've laid everything out, so we thought we'd take you through what's what, and then hopefully you lot can let us know if <laughs> we're missing anything absolutely vital. Do you want to start with yours, Hal? Yeah. Go on, you crack on. So. Mine's obviously not as big as Rue's, but I've got... Swimming costume, just in case. So we've been. I don't. I don't think I will. But <laughs> Come down a little bit so we can see. You. I don't think I will, but just in case. Just in um, case she needs to yeah. get in the pool, and I'm like, rub my back, yeah. and she has to get in with the cosy. So that's like a backup, really, swimming costume, and then kind of like a bra top. Because you want to do skin to skin, don't yeah. you? So I'll give skin to skin a go. Obviously, after you've, after Rue's done hers. Um, so I'll have that on and probably just some like high joggers um, and then a towel in case we end up there for longer, but hopefully we won't. Hopefully not. Or hopefully if you go not. in the pool. 
Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, this, I can't believe she's <laughs> actually taking this. Well, you never know. We don't <laughs> so know where you're going to be there. This is the biggest blanket. Yeah. Pull it all out. Go on. Is... Our lovely friend's got us a, a blanket a couple of Christmases ago, actually, and it is huge. <laughs> but somebody said if, if we end up staying over... Which obviously is a possibility. Look how big that is. It's got pictures of us. <laughs> we said take a blanket. That's obviously comfier than the likes of the hospital blanket. So, so I've got a blanket. Got that. Next Some one. fluffy socks. Although um, we have been told that the room is hella hot. Yeah. Um, but just in case. And then just like some pyjama bottoms, a hoodie and some shorts and a t-shirt and some joggers. That's what that pile is. What's in this little thing? Uh, this is just my toiletries. Bit boring, toothbrush, deodorant. So that's that. Um, and then the rest of the stuff is sort of like, well, that's something you might what need. That? That's the TENS machine. Oh. So I don't need to get that out. I'm sure you can manage that. Yeah. That's the TENS machine. Fairy lights. Fairy lights, water bottle. They're just some portable straighteners, you know, just maybe to make you feel a bit human. Me, are you? Well, I don't know. My hair's going to be on my head. Yeah. Scrape back. So is mine, but I don't know. Well, they're there anyway. Disposable camera. Yeah. Where's the um other camera? Earphones. That's here. Oh, and a Polaroid camera. And that's pretty much your bag, isn't it? Yeah. And that's that. Snack bag. So we've been told, like, this is the most important bag to take. Look at these mini egg orange chocolate rice cakes. <laughs> Pick and mix. Someone said chew it's so really good because you get really dry mouth with gas and air, so... We've got that. There's a lot of snacks there, isn't there, but... I think it's a very good selection. Yeah. Baby boy's bag. Go on, hold. So this bag is from Sheen. Sheen. 15 quid, I think that's really cute. Yeah, it's nice. And then, neutral theme following on. Go yeah. on, hold. Um, blankets. Cellular blankets. A blanket for the car journey. Muslins. Dodies. Mm. Dodies are up in the air because we are planning on breastfeeding or i am and we have been told that it might not be a good idea to give the baby yeah. dodies if we're trying to breastfeed but we're winging it so I we're going to take it a lot of the stuff that we've packed like yeah i think just back up into it like we probably it's like when you go on holiday you pack loads don't yeah you? i think some people like second time mums will think oh god you're over packing but we don't know do we? and so. then just some long sleeve baby suits we've got um, like newborn up yeah. to one month and so we've got tiny baby tiny baby first size and then this is newborn newborn yeah, yeah. and then a little night light so if we're feeding him in the night in fact that's cute that let's put that out you can put it at different things that was for my baby show hello it? world some bottles if we need it if we do end up going on bottles kenda mill is the one that we've chose mm. and then we've also got another bag for extra ones in case we need that wipes because apparently the hospital aren't very keen on using wipes which is why we've got the cotton buds but we've took it just in case and then some nappies and i think that's that yeah isn't it and then lastly my bag again i might have overpacked i'm not sure just going off what everyone has said but do you want to hold it hold and then i'll so flip flops apparently for the shower in case i need a shower couple of black pairs of nicks well i need to put, put put more of those in um they are if i'm going in the pool just a bralette and nicks obviously the nicks will come off some normal bras um these are like disposable nicks for post birth cold and warm relief pad this apparently your first wee is meant to be savage so that's meant to help with that nipple shield we've got a mirror toiletries Someone said good tip, don't know if it's a good tip yet, but I can imagine it being that. But the toilet roll is, apparently the toilet roll at hospitals absolutely shit after you've just given birth. So flannels, dark towel, and then just general toiletries like toothbrush, lips are meant to get really dry, so Vaseline. We've got a birth comb, a portable fan, nursing pillow, bottle, and then we've got a long pair of PJs, a short pair of PJs, and a nighty. Which didn't look very glamorous, did it? <laughs> and then a couple of plugs and a long charger. Is there anything else missing there? No, I think you've got Spritz everything. Spritz for bits. Oh, yeah. Tripod in the hope that we film it. Oh, a nursing bra as well. Baby go. Really, really comfortable. And I think that is everything. Hair clip, bubbles. So if there's anything that we're missing, please let us know. And I think that is that.
So I've just put baby's car seat in. These ISO fixings, I found them a bit fiddly at first, but actually they're very easy to put in. You just extend them and um, put them into the little latch in the back. Everything's relatively easy because it tells you once everything's green, it means you've put everything in properly. So, and this thing just beeps if it's not secure and touching the floor. There's a few things when I've like looked on the tutorials on YouTube and stuff. There's just a little latch here. They can just lie back a little bit. Is better for their airways and breathing when they're, they're small. It always has to remain upright. Then it has these little wings. So if you put them out onto the side closest to the door, um, when you close the door, um, apparently it just gives it more support. To swizzle it round, you just pull those little, these little wings here. You can twist them round. And then basically to lift it off, um, you just pull that up there and it literally just comes off really easy um, and then yeah twist it round and it's sort of locked in so yeah we've gone for the cloud t cybex with the iso fix base when we come to put it in my car this is Rue's car when we come to put it in my car um, it's just as secure to put it in with the seat belt so we didn't bother getting another uh, ice fix base and then here yeah, kitted out a little mirror with it too 